Okay, so the purpose of this is to explore or review functions. So functions being when we have an input and an output and a unique output for each, each individual input. And then we want to think about limits, and this is going to be a new idea for many, but, but limits is a hugely important concept in mathematics that looks at uh, what happens to a function as your input gets close to a certain value. What we'd like to be able to answer at the end of this is what happens to our geometric growth What happens to our geometric growth as, and this is how we write limits, as n gets close to, or as n approaches infinity. And so that, what we're writing is n and then arrow saying it's getting close to infinity. So in other words, if we were to have an infinite number of terms, what would our n value approach? Or sorry, what would our, um, what would our geometric series approach? So just a little bit of review of, of functions. Um, of functions, we have some input, which is x, and we have some output, which is our function, which we typically write as f of x. So when x is negative 2, if we were to put negative 2 in here, we get 0, and we could plot that on our graph over here. And when x is negative 1, um, we get 1 back. So I'm just putting in values into here. I'm going to skip 0 for a second. When x equals 1, we get 3. And when x is 2, putting 2 into here, you get 4. And so this looks like a straight line. But the question is, what happens when x equals 0? Because if I were to put 0 into this, I would be dividing by 0, and you get something that's undefined. So it's undefined, because you can't divide by 0. But as we get, for, for all intents and purposes, it's really following this straight line until, right up until that moment of x being when x is 0. So you get what's called a hole. And many of you may have explored this if you've looked at rational functions in the past. And so it looks like a line. It behaves like a line except for just this one spot right there, which is a hole at the point 0, 2. Try graphing this on, a, on graphing software and see what you get. Okay, so again, looking back at this function, what happens when x equals 0? Well, like we said, when x equals 0, uh, our function is undefined. But what happens when x gets close to 0, this is really the idea of limits. And when x gets close to 0, my function gets close to, as we saw in the last graph, it gets close to 2. So the way that we write this is that we say, what happens, the limit, we're saying when x gets close to 0, what does my function get close? get close to? Well, it gets close to 2. So the idea here is that instead of putting in a direct input, we're putting in like values that are close to that. We're getting putting in values that are close to 0. So said another way, and written in the general form, what we're saying is as x gets close to a, on either side of A, so coming from the from the left hand side or the right hand side, so on either side, the limit is saying what does f of x get close to? So let's look at another example. We've got this function f of x equals x over x. Well, anything divided by itself is just 1 except for 0. So for all values, for any input that we put in, 
Like when we put x equals 1, our function returns 1. When we put in x equals 2, our function is going to return 1. When we put in negative 1, our function returns 1. Negative 2, it returns 1. So it's going to return 1 for all of these values. So it's going to be the straight constant line, except for when x equals 0. Because for this particular case, x cannot be 0. And it's not always x can't be 0. It's just x, 0 can't be in the denominator. So for this particular problem, looking here, we say as x is getting close to 0, my function is getting close to 1, even though x can't be 0 for this particular case. All right, so now let's try to put this in, in the context of, of geometric growth. So in geometric growth, we're going to have some, some growth rate raised to the number of times in which I've, the number of terms that I've added, n. And we're going to think about what happens when n gets really, really, really big, so when we add an infinite number of terms. So just as a reminder uh, here, r is the rate of growth. This is written weird. R is the rate of growth. Um, so in particular, geometric growth, where R is defined as the n plus 1th term over the nth term. So what we'd like to be able to do is say, what happens to this value when n approaches infinity? And then we're going to piece this together with some of the sort of the bigger picture. OK, well, a nice case is what happens when R is less than 1? And just as a, as a reminder for this, for our growth rates and geometric growth, r is always greater than 0. So we could say when r is between 0 and 1. So an example of that would be 1 half to the n. In this case, r equals 1 half. And if we think about graphing some of these points, when n equals 0, when n equals 0, uh, our function equals 1. And when n equals 1, our function would be 1 half. And when n is 2, it would be 1 fourth. And when n is 3, it would be 1 eighth. And when n is 4, it would be 1 sixteenth. When n is 5, it would be 1 thirty second. So we're going off by powers of 2. And what we see here, this is called exponential decay. So every single, um, you know, from one integer to the next, we have half as much as we had before. Well, as n goes to infinity, what will this function approach? Well, we can see, what, what is this line getting very, very close to? It's getting very, very close to 0. It'll never equal 0, but it'll get very close to 0. Think about that as like walking toward a wall. If you start here and you walk toward a wall and you always go halfway and then you go halfway and then you go halfway and then you go halfway you'll get very close to the wall the distance between you and the wall will get close to zero but it will never quite equal zero but it will get close to zero let's look at another example what if r equals one what if our growth rate equals one well this is actually not really geometric growth and, and we'll see why in a second but let's just think about this problem so so in this case our function in terms of n would be 1 over n because our rate is 1. And for any value of 1, we're just going to get 1 back. So you'll just get the straight line. So no matter what n is, no matter what n is, it always returns 1. So then if we were to think about this problem, as n gets close to infinity, 1 to the n is just going to stay at 1 because it never deviates. All right, last, last example, and then we'll tie it together. What if r is greater than 1? An example of that would be like 2 to the n. So when n equals 0, our function is 1. And when n is 1, it's 2. And when n is 2, our function is 4. And when n is 3, our function is 8. And here we have exponential growth. So the, in other words, the, the next term is always twice the term before it. 
So as n goes to infinity, since we're always growing, as n goes to infinity, my function will approach infinity as well. And sometimes we'll also say, um, sometimes we'll also say that the limit is undefined because it doesn't go to a finite value. So we'll either say it equals infinity or you can say the limit is undefined. Either one is acceptable answer. Okay, so if r is greater than 1, if we think about, you know, adding an infinite number of geometric terms, we can replace our sigma notation here with, with the equation for what our, you know, our generalized summation for a geometric series. And we notice that as n goes to infinity, looking at this function here, which gives us, this is the function for the sum of the n terms, the only thing that depends on n here is this r to the n. And we just showed that as, as r, you know, if r is greater than 1 and n is going to infinity, this value also goes to infinity. So this whole term then will go to infinity. So the limit, we could say, is inf infinite or undefined. In other words, if you were to add an infinite number of these terms, the, the value just keeps on growing and growing and growing it will get infinitely large. And I think that should make intuitive sense, much more intuitive sense than the next example. If r is less than 1, and this is where it gets really, really interesting, and I think totally beautiful. Um, so again, we say, what happens is, as n goes to infinity of my, of my geometric series, again, we're replacing the sigma notation with the equation that we generated for the sum of the n terms. And as r, again, r raised to the n is the only value that depends on n. And we showed that as n goes to infinity, if r is less than 1, this approaches 0. So we get that this equals just a1 over 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r, or simpler, the first term over 1 minus r, which is to say if we add an infinite number of terms, as long as my r value is less than 1, the sum approaches a finite value. We add an infinite number of terms. You add terms for forever and ever and ever, and yet the value approaches something finite. Beautiful. All right, and then the last case is what happens if r equals 1? Well, this is, a, this is the special case. So um, what, we can, what we recognize, if r equals 1, then we can replace, you know, as n goes to infinity of my geometric series, we can replace r with 1, and, and 1 to the n just equals 1. So this statement just becomes the sum of a sub i, which we could rewrite as the limit as n goes to infinity. So we're just adding a, the first term, over and over again. How many times? n times. So this just equals n times a1. And as n goes to infinity, this just equals infinity, or undefined. So I let's finish with one really nice example. Let's say that you have, you start off with a 1,000 and you have a growth rate of two-thirds, which means that every time you're going to have two-thirds what you had before. Or in other words, your n plus one-th term over your nth term is two-thirds. And so we could say, you know, if we wanted to do geometric growth, the sum of a thousand times two-thirds to the i minus one from i equals one to n, and let's say what happens as n goes to infinity. Well, what we just showed is that this just equals my first term over 1 minus the growth rate. 
or if we solve this out, 1,000 over 1 third, which equals 3,000. So as the number of terms that we add approaches infinity, the geometric series, the sum of all the terms, will approach a finite value of 3,000. That's it.